You might be sharing the wrong screen. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I am, yeah, so basically this is my story of of like my my journey of creating like internal docs as code. So who, who am I? I've been a full stack developer for, for five years and you can usually reach out to me on like Fulci. It's a bit of a weird name. Um, yeah, so, uh, so, so like what are, so the docs I usually write, they're mostly technical. So it's most of the time there's stuff, there's stuff like, like it's stuff, like the glossary, like uh, onboarding docs or how to do blank as a dev and just how to do stuff, how stuff works as, as a high level. And like the reason, there's a lot of good reasons to, to write docs um, as, as like, as everyone is likely aware. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so one, so like why I write docs personally is for one, it's it's like it's basically like my personal notes, and I'm kind of make them public. Um, and yeah, because uh, yeah, because I always write notes anyway, and it helps me better understand like how stuff works and break stuff down. And also know I'm gonna forget stuff if I don't write write stuff down. Um, also, if I if I put a little bit more time, then like others could benefit too from my notes. Um, so yeah, so this is not a criticism of like any of the workplaces I've been at, uh, and but generally, like at all the places I've worked at so far, generally docs are kind of like all over the place. They could be in like in the wiki, in Slack, in like your project management tool, in the code. And uh, the big issue is that like a lot of the stuff also isn't searchable. So a lot of the, so there's going to be a lot of stuff in like private Slack messages or just people's heads. And it, it makes sense why things are this way as developers, because yeah, you're busy and you got stuff to do. And at the end of the day, it's it's kind of fine. Like maybe it's a little bit messy, maybe it's a little bit overwhelming, and maybe it's 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 not the most pressing issue. Like, it's, uh, and if you could, you could generally message someone on Slack and get an answer, and everyone can generally get your stuff done. So if you kind of just replace like this, like these plants with like documentation. So generally, it's if it ain't broke, why don't fix it? So yeah. So as I've mentioned before, like there are some problems with. Bad, uh, bad docs, right? So for one, like if if there's only stuff in your, if there's only this stuff in people's heads and they leave, you're you're kind of screwed. You kind of you're kind of scrambling to figure out how stuff works when it does break. Um, and like with docs, like you can, like everyone forgets, right? And you can with docs, you can kind of remember like like how things worked and why. And also, yeah, again, like it's helping helping others, especially during onboarding. Like that's especially that's a use case that's pretty compelling. So. Like my 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 approach or my thought process was kind of like oh okay then I'll just try to make the docs easier so so I like as so I do a lot of front end and like tests on the front end used to be like pretty pretty rare but like as the developer experience got a lot better so like there was like there's a lot of test li testing libraries like there's, there's like testing like React testing library which then kind of got rebranded but yeah and there's like there's there's like a, there's a lot of end to end frameworks now so there's Cypress which is which is kind of mind blowingly Good, and then now there's playwright, which is even better, and or I guess well, that's that's a hot take. But yeah, they're both they're both great. Um, yeah, so as so basically as the tools got better, basically testing out more and more comments. So that was kind of like my approach, and like if you just reduce the friction, then people are more likely to do it. Um, so yeah, yeah. Does anyone have questions on how docs usually are or? Uh, are you going to define docs as code now, Fulci? Yes. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I'll continue. So, so as docs, yeah. So basically, what docs as code is, it's it's in the name where you basically treat docs the same way that you treat code. So you use the same tools, you use the same processes. So docs usually, so just like code, you store docs in your version control. So usually Git, and and like you have code review. So whenever you make a change to your docs. Just like your code, so when you make make a change to your code, you need you'd. It's general practice now where like you need someone to review your, review the code, and so basically docs as code is does the same process where, you want to make a change to the docs. Okay, you need someone to to approve it, to review it, and to approve it. Um, yeah. So there are oh, so there are a lot of, so like so there are a few problems that we want to address so that devs so that devs are more like so like what are the problems that that devs that 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 we want to address so that devs are more likely to write the docs. So 
yeah, first off, like one one issue with documentation is it just sometimes does, doesn't exist or it's hard to find. Um, another thing could be that it's it could it's either wrong or outdated. Yeah, so there's always the issue of how like when the NC you write write docs like you it becomes something you have to maintain just like code, right? Um, another thing, yeah, another another reason why my devs might not like docs is because it's just hard to write. It's a completely different skill set, and most devs, including myself included, don't have a lot of experience writing. And another thing is like a lot of devs also don't have like their their ESL or as a sec so they have English as a second or even third or fourth language. Um, and so as a result, like docs can be pretty hard to read. And another issue is like docs usually aren't mandatory. So un like unlike tests, like for example, like you, yeah, so so you might have a culture where like, oh, if you write some code, you need to write tests for it. Whereas I, I'm, yeah, th I'm, I'm, it's, it's likely that that cult, like, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Whereas it's, yeah. You don't have Whereas, to like, unit test your documentation to make sure it's accurate. Or yeah, or like just, just like the idea that hmm. um, like when you, when you write some code or when you create a feature, like generally it's not, I have never been at a company where like, oh no, you have to write docs. You have to write documentation or update the docs because you you changed some code, mm. right? Um, mm. So yeah, so as it when it goes comes down to it, basically docs as code is just it's all about version control, right? Um, and this is how like version control might address some of the issues. So so the problem of like it doesn't exist or it's hard to find. So with version control, like, well one it's searchable. Right? It's it's just plain it's it's text. And so, so actually, there's a few things. So one, like, yeah, it's just it's just plain text. So it's you can use there's a whole bunch of solutions to search through that. Another thing is like I've, I've had problems with wikis. Well, um, at least in my particular approach. So I did like just internal. So this doc, the this Git repository that I created, it just has like developer documentation. So like it, it won't have like any of the, and it won't have any like the irrelevant. It won't, it'll only have like developer documentation. And so it's, the search is going to be a little bit better just because there's an explicit filter. Like, uh, right. So they could only have non dev content. So you won't have stuff from like other teams or uh, unrelated. Right. So another, and so with code review, it's again with code review, like, oh, like uh, who know about the documentation. Um, yeah, so another thing, so so one, one other issue when it, something's wrong or outdated um, and how version control can address that is like with Git, you know when each line was last edited. So I've, I've had the problem where like you have a page where like, oh, it might have been updated yesterday, but like this particular paragraph that I care about might have been last updated two years ago. So with Git, like you kind of know like when when this line was last changed and you can view like exactly like how how that line was was last changed. Yeah. So again, with, with with when so one issue with hard so is is when like docs is hard to hard to understand. So with version control, basically, if someone has to approve the change, then at least two people understand um, how like two people understand the docs. And it's always going to be hard to write docs, but like there there are processes like so yeah. So you can do like linter suggestions. So basically, what lint so linter is I think it's just I don't I think it's a programming term where basically it's like a program that analyzes your code and looks for vulnerabilities and style. So you can basically like automate the Microsoft style guide or the Google style guide or um, yeah. And another thing that you, that could be implemented is like basically you have something called a mono repo. So this is something that Google actually does, uh, where I've heard that it does, where basically all of their code is in one giant. Uh, one giant, uh, yeah, so basically one giant folder, right? So you have one subfolder, which is like all your docs, and then this folder is like all of your other content. So basically, uh, if with first control, you might, you can actually have, so you can have to take this existing pr process of code review and and just add docs on to the same process. You're not actually, it, it's not actually adding additional friction. Um, and if you could also make it, do, make it so that docs aren't mandatory, so, so for example, I, I know that the Django, pro, uh, or I've seen a few talks that I've seen, like the Django, which is a, a, a Python framework, backend framework, 
I believe if you want to make a change, a code change to it, if because it's an open source project, if you want to if you want to make a code change to it, you need to update the docs, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. So does anyone have any questions about docs as code? I have a quick question. Can you hear me? Anybody? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Interesting talk. Um, quite a few questions. Uh, I'll just bring up one thing. Do you generate your? I mean, when you say you store your documentation in Git, is it? Do people search the Git repository to find what they need, or do you generate maybe something and using, say, a you know, one of those static site generators to publish it in some way or use maybe like uh, what's it called? There's that um, there's that tool for DevOps where they generate things from code and. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, so I was going to talk about the setup later. Oh, OK, um, okay. but yeah, I think. Yeah, so far I've just kind of gone through like what what like the right right is docs. So write write the docs. Yeah, the write the docs. Docs is code. Or, yeah, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff about docs as code. And I guess um now this is my actually talking about like Okay, that's fine. You're answering uh, my question then. <laughs> I, I, I have a quick question actually. Yeah. Not so much for you, Fulci, but everybody. Uh do we have anybody in the audience who who does use docs as code right now? Currently? No? Maybe no. Okay, I I know um, we had one of the East Coast Quorum meetups, and there was a few people who were using Docs as code, but we we have a smaller crowd tonight. Anyways, I I'll let you carry on. Sorry, Fulci. Oh yeah, yeah. So actually, I realized that I probably should have created a distinction. So there is some um yeah. So if, uh, can you guys? Oh okay. Good thing this doesn't actually have. Any you can see your terminal now. Real data. Yeah. Yeah, so I see. Yep. So basically, like if you have, so this is different than, like, for example, because you, you can have, uh, uh, like, you can do something like, um, right? So you, you, you can create like strings here, but this is, yeah, this is not what I'm talking about, um, where you kind of like you can like, annotate like your, your code. This is, uh, so what I'm talking about is, Is something that looks like this. So, like, this is kind of like what I'm going to demo, where it's just it's 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 like text um, that is that is connected, but not like explicitly generated from code. So, uh, the the solution that I decided to, to to use is MK Docs Material. So, Yeah, so so docs as code is, is kind of an idea. And whereas like this is actually an implementation of it. So yeah, this is a static site generator. So it takes in like a bunch of markdown and then it generates like a, a website, like the one that I showed you. And the reason why I chose like I, I liked FK Docs is because most, if not all devs, so most devs know markdown or it's in and so most people don't need to need to learn a new language. And also like the company I currently work at, like all the devs know Python. So I didn't want to like be like exclude anyone. So but you also don't need to know Python to, to use Anchor Docs. You just need a little bit of knowledge on how to use use Python for Anchor Docs. Um, yeah, and I kind of liked how we have one like the search, and like it has it has nice search features, and it has a bunch of other features like like call out slash or admonitions. It has icons. It has dark mode, which I'll show, and like custom CSS and JS and Google Analytics, which is all fun. Um, and also it's it's free, but it also has like a good business model. So you can upgrade like for 10 bucks a month if you want like additional like features as well. Like um, and again, because it's a status generator, so what it does is it just generates HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So you can kind of host it any anywhere for free. And so yeah, one one place, the place I hosted at work is like at in the GitHub is on GitHub pages. So and because it's in like an organizational like a GitHub org, org, a GitHub org or like organizations repository. Basically, only people who are like who are logged in via a single sign-on on GitHub can actually view the view the page. Otherwise, you're going to get redirected to a GitHub login page. So, did you consider Jekyll as well, or? Oh yeah, yeah. So I, because oh. I think GitHub pages are actually run behind the scenes. Use Jekyll, from what I heard. 
to be totally honest, I didn't. Yeah. So there's the whole. There's so many. So there's so many possibilities. Yeah. I kind of just had bit decision fatigue and just picked one. Um, I I don't know like all the pros and cons. I think yeah. But yeah, I heard okay, really good things about Jekyll too. But yeah, like picking kind of picking one isn't isn't the biggest, isn't like the most important thing. Um, yeah. So what basically what happened was like the engineer managers they created like a dev docs repo. Um, so they just had plain old, plain old like markdown files, and I kind of just created a. P after I learned that, I kind of created a POC with. Uh, after I, was, I watched a whole bunch of bunch of write the docs talks, I created a proof of concept, and I kind of just kept at it, <laughs> kept on adding to it. Um, yeah, so there's there's understandably like the docs code, like the setup instructions are pretty, or I think are pretty good. Um, I don't think I have time to cover it, although I could if. There's some time at the end. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to go through a quick demo. So here is like kind of like my personal notes. Right. So, uh, so what you can do is you can click on. So one way you can edit is you can click on like this edit button. Right. And then here I can make some changes. Sure, let's add up a whole bunch of A's. And then I can, what I can do is I like create a uh, blog that so. so what I can do is I can add a whole bunch of A's and I can create a pull request just like how I would with code. So you're making this change right now in Git, full chain? Uh, yeah, so this is like the GitHub interface. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, so you can view so basically someone can view the changes and they could say, Hey, this is I don't know, like and someone can like request changes or something mm -hmm. like that. I don't know. Well, like, I don't know. Like, so you can click something like that, and then yeah, basically there could there could be a back and forth between different people in a conversation like this. And then um, so what I have as well is um, so there is so whenever you create a pull request, I I create a little job where he uses this thing called Vale, where it'll it'll lint your English. I actually already have one set up here. So, mm. oh, yeah. So I'm not sure how long it exactly takes. Yeah. So basically, it'll give me a whole bunch of warning warnings. So I I set this up using like Microsoft uh, style guide because it seemed like it was a pretty popular one, and it it gives a whole bunch of suggestions like consider using all instead of all of, capitalize mm. O, right? So it can give you. So it can be like it can create standardization. So this is what, yeah. So which is which will which developers will feel at home with, especially um, if they are like using Python or JavaScript or TypeScript, like we like what we use at our at my day job. Like if so, yeah. Especially if you're using like dynamic languages. Um, yeah, and then you can. Then what you could do is. You can okay. Apparently, it's pretty fast, right? And then yeah, like you could well, like I, I set it up so that you you can set it up where you you, you can't you, it won't let you merge. But I I, I just didn't have to set that up because I don't think anyone's gonna add to my private notes to random notes. Yeah. Right, so then I will can confirm the squash. Um. So what I did is actually what did I actually do? Okay. So I just added a bunch of A's and if I go to the repository. You'll, so right now there is this um, job. So once you you merge it in, it right now it's going to it's going to build all of the HTML CSS JavaScript and it's going to deploy it. So in a few in a minute or so, it's go back to fullchainzang.com. There should be a whole bunch of A's. Yeah, and you can you can you don't have to use like all this GitHub UI. You, like developers can can use like their, the tools that they're used to. Like they can use. Uh, like their their code editor and they don't have yeah they can use all the tools that they already use every day yeah um, oh there's also yeah so I guess can you um, sorry Fulci can you go back to can we see um, the A's pushed to your site I'm not sure if they, yeah, they so actually got pushed fresh. okay it's, it's still working oh yeah yeah okay. yeah I need to the cash. So just so this is your own site we're looking at, the Fulci one? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I'll take some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to show Google Analytics. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you, like you can also with MK Docs, you can also set up Google An Analytics. I personally haven't used it. Like obviously, no one really. I don't even go on to my own site now. <laughs> but like, like, okay, so apparently over the past however month month or so, there's been 13 visits to, to this homepage. But, oh, there you go. So now that when I refresh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it gets updated. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? I, I glossed over a lot of stuff, so my apologies. No, no. Any questions for Fulci? Are, are your fellow devs at work taking advantage of this now? Are they contributing to this? Yeah, that's that's the nine month update. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's been running for nine months and? <laughs> and? <laughs> I, well, well, before before you go to the nine month update, I, I have a quick question just in case um, I, I have used Git a little bit, like only a tiny bit, and I, I more or less followed what you're doing, but this is also the second time I've seen this because we, you showed me this before, Fulci. Has anyone any, any questions for Fulci? Do they want to kind of know exactly what was going on there, or are we good? Feel free to ask. Oh, Audrey, go ahead. Oh, you're on mute, Audrey. Oh, you're still mute, Audrey, I think. Never mind, carry on, says Audrey. Okay. Okay, carry on, Fulci. Okay, yeah, so yeah, the nine-month update. So I noticed that there's a few downsides to using, to use, like, so there's a few downsides to not necessarily, so not necessarily uh, downsides to MK Docs, but um, so just for general, generally for stat, at least, unless there's another static site generator that has fixed this problem, but if you ever want to change your change a page name, so like let's say I wanted to change the glossary, right? Um, if I want to change it to like glossary two wise, then basically if I if I went back to glossary, if I if you have like a link that's if you have a bookmark to glossary.html, and then but the new name is actually glossary, basically it's it's a manual process. Whereas in a wiki, it would kind of be automatic, like there would be an automatic redirect whenever you renamed a file. So um, that's that's what that's a little downside. Um, yeah, another thing, yeah, so I think this is this is one of the, the two biggest downside uh, uh, things that I didn't the main core issues I didn't address. So so one one is that because only devs can access it, no one really ended like the entry management didn't really end up wanting to write a lot of docs uh, in this dev docs because they because like there's this dream of having like all of your docs in one place right and so as a result yeah like so part a part of this morning process yeah so another team decided to use wikis and like now even now like i'm i i kind of I'm, I'm yeah i'm just going to use the wiki for a lot of things um yeah so basically how it's used basically we have 50 devs that are at my company and about 50 percent have contributed um, yeah, so but unfortunately, I solved like the vast majority of the, of the commits. So commit is like the number of changes. So yeah, um, yeah. So you may so at my at my company, you I, I added this like this this header at the top where where if you click on this uh, if you click on this link, it will lead it'll go to something like a Google form where you can request like uh, like oh like this is missing or there's an error there issue there. So just because there's already a process in GitHub that where you can create a, where you can create like an issue, but I want it to like standardize so that we can use our, our product management software. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never gotten any requests, unfortunately. Yeah, um, yeah, so it's, it's a bit sad. Uh, Yeah, so I think the biggest thing that I didn't have was just like leadership buy-in, and like maybe if I could, yeah, maybe something that where people would actually be more likely to use it is if we had a modern repo. But again, that that is a huge, that's a huge endeavor, and I don't think that's actually going to happen at my company uh, because there are a lot of pros. That's that's a whole different engineering uh, thing. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, now I'm just gonna just not write as many public notes because it does take a 
pretty sizable amount of time to to like make my personal notes palatable and like actually useful for the, the others can understand. And yeah, since like no one really <laughs> reads my, my docs anyway, and I am, yeah, I'm just going to continue posting a bunch of questions in the public Slack channels, and I'm just going to mourn and grieve and like mourn on what, what dead docs could have been. And yeah, so this is the general, hmm. this is the general overview, which I mm -hmm. probably should have put at the beginning too. So, yeah. So, so what, what wiki product are they using? They uh, so, to go with? so we use Cleary. I'm not sure it's, yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, Cleary. Is it, is it free? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Mm, that's usually an advantage of one thing. It's free and I got to pay for it. You know, <laughs> that usually yeah. steers people to the, I don't want to pay for it thing. <laughs> Cause it's, it's, it's like a kind of one of those like all in one tools. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they're, yeah. Uh, I, I wish they're they're yeah because yeah, we we were previously using Bookstack and there were there's there's limitations to what you yeah another like, like a personal small little nit about Bookstack is that like or at least the version that we had running was yeah maybe the writing experience wasn't as good because you like you had to like use the use your mouse and then click on oh um, format format this manually whereas like and you couldn't really do that many shortcuts I think they fixed that in the newer versions though. Hmm. But yeah, we switched, we migrated over from that to Cleary because that's kind of has like an all-in-one, all-in-one tool kind of thing, kind of vibe. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the disadvantages of wikis are, are generally more for a user-facing documentation that it's like you can't do versioning very well, and keeping track of maintaining different versions and stuff like that makes sometimes really difficult in wikis. Fulci, like your documentation, is it strictly internal or is there any benefit to say the customers of your company? Like, would there be any benefit to publish what you produce externally? Or is it maybe maybe it's proprietary or sensitive? I don't know, but just wondering. Yeah, so it's, I, I generally, my role is generally not client facing. So I don't see any, it's kind of like, oh, how do you, like how do you restore this dump or like yeah or like, how, like django basically like so like django backend testing like how we, mm. how we do how we do django backend testing or like um yeah there's also some onboarding stuff mm -hmm. yeah it does sound sort of like you know information that belong you know that might make sense in a wiki at some you know somewhat I've seen that kind of information in a wiki quite a bit and like, you know, uh, at uh, Confluence and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we we did, yeah, everything was in a wiki before and I tried to migrate stuff over, but it, it was pretty time consuming. I mean, I suppose if your company had REST APIs or something I dealt with that, then maybe that would be something that might be worth publishing uh, directly, you know, sort of docs as code or on GitHub or something, but like public yeah. public user facing type documentation. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. This is but this it, sounds more internal, all right. Yeah. 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 Uh, quick question for you, Fulci. How long did it take you to set this up? Would you say like your private notes to create um, your site and everything uh, using MK Docs? How long would you say it took you to spin something up that was usable for other people? I mean, I can look at this. I, I, I have no clue. <laughs> Just a ballpark, you know. I was wondering, like, yeah. So basically, uh, yeah. The... Oh god. Okay, maybe I. I okay, my bad. I, maybe I, uh, I guess because uh, I was doing everything on my own time, so it took, mm, mm. like I, I did just put like a couple hours here and there. So, yeah, I'd say like. I got something like in a month and then I okay. just slowly started adding stuff to it. I'm curious, um, do you have anyone in your company that's looking at this that's not a developer? And the reason I'm curious is because right now I'm trying to figure out, I've been tasked at my company to 
figure out a new way to manage documentation for version control. And so I would love something like Git, but I need people who aren't that technical to be able to use it. So I'm like wondering if you've had anyone need to read these notes and if so, like, did you have to train them on Git or how did it go? Yeah, uh, it's been mostly, it's only been for developers. So I haven't had to train anyone to use Git. Okay. Um, yeah, Jeff scared me because I was looking at wikis and now I hear Jeff saying they're bad for version control. And I'm like, ah! They, they are notoriously difficult at handling version control or quite awkward. <laughs> and especially if you're trying to do content reuse in different versions, because oftentimes a lot of stuff doesn't change from version to version, but some stuff does. And, but then you've got to you know, publish an entirely new set of, of documents in the in the in the new version type thing so that's that's a traditional weaknesses of wikis there's a few talks around on write the docs and that sort of stuff yeah really almost the industry needs like a like a a, a, a get back end type thing and a and a forward facing non-technical writer interface do, mm -hmm. that talks to Git, but does all the all, does all the magic in the background. <laughs> let's it all let's it all that happen. That would be mm -hmm. so awesome because I feel like I'm gonna have the same problem as Fulci. Like he made this great tool, but nobody's yeah. using it for whatever reason. And I think for on my team it would be because it's not accessible. But yeah, traditionally the the problem of uptake on these sort of things is that you if you, especially if you want more contributors, it's difficult to overcome their resistance to wanting to jump in and, and write stuff for you or help you write stuff or things like that so mm -hmm. what's the uh, what's the uptake on the on the uh, on the wiki uh Fulci? i think no one really like i, I think I, well, like, I haven't heard well, like because yeah people only write stuff in the wiki when they have to right <laughs> and then, yeah, people only write docs when they have to yeah, yeah. like you were saying, but the docs is code. Have you ever heard of the philosophy of, of docs and then and then code? <laughs> docs yeah, come yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, docs driven development. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that scares a lot of developers. <laughs> I mean, it, it it's pretty similar to just like test driven development, which which some people evangelize evangelize a little bit too much. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's, yeah, I think it's, it's a good practice. Hmm. That sounds like Fulci, just uh, from what Michelle was saying, like uh, MK Docs didn't sound like it was, it took that long to spin up and it was free. And Michelle, if you already had GitHub in your company, it sounds like it might not take that much effort to get something up and running as like a test case to see how, I mean, I don't know what type of docs you're writing, but I'm imagining, I don't know, something like somewhere I used to work, we had a really involved installation guide for, um, it was 30 pages long, but if you were on an Oracle database, it was even longer. If it was SQL, it was this long. And then we had one for Windows and we had one for uh, Linux. And so there was like nine different versions to maintain. So if we could have something like uh, MK Docs and you could always like you change one line and then you could spit out nine different versions of the same guide. I don't know if that's possible MK, with MK Docs, Fulci. What would you reckon? I, well, I got, yeah, I haven't really tried any other. Mm. Yeah, uh, because. Um, yes, because, yeah, generally, like, versioning. Because, yeah, it's, it's one thing to have, like, your code in version control. It's another thing to actually, like, version your, like, have, like, to tag, to have, to tag and say, hey, this is version. Yeah. One. This is the yeah. docs for one point. Yeah, that was a bit of a boomerang question, but but even um, say uh, the, one of the frustrating things back with writing that installation guide to take my point further, my example further, um, it would take maybe, I don't know, four months for the uh, changes from dev to kind of, you know, find their way down the pipeline to the tech writing department. And then we kind of look at this comment that as was often not uh, you know, it was written by somebody who's ESL. So we'd have to kind of go back to them back and forth and eventually make like like I say, four months after the actual change was made, it would find its way into the documentation. Whereas if devs themselves could just kind of insert what they knew was different into the into the uh, doc as using docs as code, do you know? Do you see what I'm saying? 
the change um, would be immediate and it would be entirely accurate. Yeah. So like when I click this, when I click this uh, edit button, basically mm -hmm. what this does is it just, it's just, a, it just goes to this URL. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just a regular link. And so this is all a GitHub. This is all a GitHub's interface, which like, you can preview as well, except it's, like, it'll have some stuff that's missing. Um, like, cause, cause there's, there's like a uh, syntax that's specific to MK docs. Uh, so, um, so yeah, MK docs is just the static site generator. Uh, so mm -hmm. your question was, Oh, I, I I guess using GitHub then, if you prefer. But um, my point was just that uh, if you let devs have um, more control over material that they know better, then they could immediately make the change where it needs to be made. And then the tech writers could wrangle the content uh, accordingly. But at least what was, you know, sentence per sentence would be accurate. But um but never mind. You know what? I think I'm taking us off course with my question. So I'll, I'll just abandon it there. Yeah, I, I think like the hardest part is 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 like just getting is is like actually writing docs. Mm. It's, it's it's hard. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's why we have jobs, told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to say. Oh, go oh ahead, sorry, Michelle. Dan. Go ahead. No, no. I, I was just gonna say, like off of what Jeff said, my coworker is always complaining that what he sends to me is like garbage, and I'm like, this is job security for me. Like, please keep writing like <laughs> crap, so I can keep my job. <laughs> I, I, I was saying this to Fulci when I met him. Uh, we met last Friday, and I was gonna say, like Fulci, you are something of a unicorn, a developer who cares about docs and who actually does want to contribute and make the docs better, because. Um, I'm sure other people on the call will um, uh, can can agree with uh, at least there's some people. Um, I've met developers who just don't want to have any time with docs. They consider it a speed bump and they hate it and they just like just want to ignore me, you know, and just ignore all my questions. And then there are the rare developers who will give you know give me five minutes because they know I'm not a complete idiot and I will frame my question as quickly and concisely as possible and I'll like highlight the pertinent part of my question in red that they need to answer is this right yes or no and they can say yeah and i'll leave them alone but you are very rare in that you are interested in docs and want to uh, help things get better and by the way um i i, I think a docs as code a solution for um documentation is definitely a more engineering uh, it's more a dev centric approach it's just um it's not that it's a bad or or bet or 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 good. It's just it, it's definitely the way I I see other engineers approach documentation. And uh, yeah, I but I don't know much about it, so I I appreciated learning a bit more tonight. Anyone else have have stories of uh, helpful or super unhelpful devs with us? <laughs> I, I deal with them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I got a, I got a couple that write really, really well, and I barely have to do anything on their stuff at all, mm -hmm. other than maybe have to translate it into another another repo type location for it or something like that. But they're they're very little polishing required. Others I can't even get them to write, uh, you know, even simple notes in in like in Jira saying, "What did you actually right. do to the program? What what did you change? What was the problem here?" <laughs> so I'm trying to write release notes going. You know, and they're just putting, you know, six hours programming, programming, programming. Well, I know you did programming. What did you actually program in here? <laughs> I have to go back and read. I have to actually read the code to figure out what they were trying to do and then take wild stabbing guesses on on teams going, I think this is what you were trying to do in here. Was this what you were actually going after? Yeah. yeah. Drives it crazy sometimes. <laughs> cool. Um, I think it's hard, too, because, like, like when I have to perform series reviews, I have no clue what the heck I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually I'm just terrible at setting goals. And of course, every year they want you to set new goals for the year. Oh, so, yeah. I'm just doing my job. Just I've got a backlog from years and years and years of work here. I, I don't need to set goals. I just have to get start getting through it all. That's all. Started uh, getting a little Excel spreadsheet going, what did I actually do this month? <laughs> 
Uh, I have a quick, another t technical question. I think this is on my list of things to ask you, Fulci. Pro apologies if you already did answer it, but um, did um, your uh, MK Docs and GitHub instance, did it need much maintenance? Uh, um, does it, did the server ever fail or anything like that? I, I, I don't know. Um, no. It worked so, swimming yes. in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like as, as long as GitHub doesn't go down, then. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, just hosting HTML, CSS, JavaScript is like dirt cheap, which yep. is which is why it's free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice one. Uh, any other questions for Fulci? I don't know. I, I never really played with Markdown much, but how does it handle images and tables and things like that, or mm -hmm. does it <laughs> really at all? Yeah. So uh, actually, let me share my screen again. So yeah, so like, let's say I'm adding something, right? And then I want to add an image. So if I just screenshot it, and then I can just, well, so this is the GitHub interface, right? So basically mm -hmm. what, right. so yeah. it's, it's going, yeah, so this is just the syntax and GitHub has a nice interface where what it does, it uploads something and then it just it creates the link for it. Oh, so cool. now you can just preview. Mm. Um, yeah, so there's also markdown tables or something. Yeah, so you can just, oh, yeah, so something like this. And if I just paste it here. Yeah, so there's also like nice, like uh, what you see is what you get tools as well. So now, hmm. that, luckily that didn't have any actual, yeah, so now basically that is a table. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pretty yeah, cool. and then like, yeah, they can make it uh, look a lot nicer. If you want to actually, so yeah, obviously editing, editing this, this plain text is a little bit tough. So there are like what you see is what yeah. So this is this is the thing that that makes writing in Markdown really nice. Is there's a whole bunch of what you see is what you get editors. Uh, just make sure. Oh yeah. So show my screen again. Yeah. So like there's there's one editor called Obsidian where basically. It's, it makes it look really, it's like it's what you see is what you get, right? So um, if you want a table, uh, mm. these are just my random notes. So um, what, was, what was that thing? Okay. Yeah, there you go. And then you can kind mm. of, oh, <laughs> oh, I guess this, this one's not as nice. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, so then, uh, yeah, usually it's a, not, a lot nicer. I'm not sure. Maybe I don't have the right extensions installed. Is uh, Obsidian free too? Uh, so yeah, this editor is free. And uh, there, is a, there is a subscription that you can, you can pay to like, host your stuff online. Um, yeah, there's another one. It's called Zettel. Just switch to open source. Yeah, so it does something as well. Yeah, so. Table, their, their table editor is pretty nice. Just... Yeah. So I use this, I use like a, which would you get? Uh, a markdown editor in addition to, like in addition to like, like with DevDocs. So that might be um, a little bit less painful front end than for, for your folks there, Michelle. Yeah, and like uh, it also has. <laughs> Still do tech, she's going. <laughs> I also doubt my own abilities with Git, but that's another yeah. story. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, let's say, I don't know. I have no clue what this is. UUID, sure. Right, so if I want another table. Yeah, so this is just another free editor and you can like, oh, I want another row, another column. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it's, it's basically, it feels like, like you're writing in, in Word, except you're just doing play text. Hmm. Cool. Uh, would you mind sharing your slides with us afterwards, Pochi? Yeah. For your dogs. Yeah. Cool. 
and I, I, oh, I see you, you did share the I think Google you did. Docs. You did. <laughs> so I can reading. always, um, I can just put the PDF version on um, Slack afterwards. Sure. If that's, uh, like that. You see, people seem to prefer PDFs. Okay. Um, cool. I don't know. Cool. All right. Thank you, Fochi. That was really good. Cheers. Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah. yeah.